Welcome to First Mile's Climate Heroes. I'm your host, Bruce Bratley, founder of recycling company First Mile. On this show, we meet and learn from the climate heroes who are building solutions right now to tackle climate change. Tourism is responsible for 8% of the world's carbon emissions, with half from transport like flying and the rest from feeding, entertaining and housing guests. In the UK, half of us will take a summer holiday this year, and 42% of these holidays will be international destinations. This all adds up to a lot of emissions, resource consumption and waste, but we love our holidays, and today's guest will help us understand how we can make travel more sustainable and thoughtful. Karen Simmons is founder and CEO of Travel Matters, a certified B Corporation business that helps travellers be proactive in protecting the environment and cultures they encounter while travelling. Karen, welcome to First Mile's Climate Heroes. Thank you very much for having me. Hope you've got the facts there right, but I think it's okay. There seems to be a lot of information on the impact of uh, travel, which makes researching uh, the podcast very helpful, really. So it's obviously a hot topic and looking forward to hearing all about it. Before we do... Tell us a little bit about uh, Karen and how you got into um, travel sector. Are you an intrepid traveller and explorer? (laughs) I think I've always been an intrepid traveller and explorer. Um, I didn't actually go to university. I went to out of the UK and uh, had my first job in Germany. Um, I studied languages at school, always been very keen to, to go off exploring and understanding different cultures. So by having my languages uh, as a good footing, Ended up doing all sorts of uh, international work, predominantly in Europe as, as a guide and a, a tour leader and then a chalet girl, lots of different sort of seasonal work. And it was through that over the years that I thought, I think I could probably set up my own business after this. So that, that's what I did. That's, and um, I'm quite old now. <laughs> Not at all. You keep doing it. And, and, and in terms of your traveling, I mean, travel widely. Where's the place that's sort of been the most shocking from a sort of environmental or cultural impact um, of the sort of effects of of climate change? Where was it sort of most profound for you? Obviously, with with, uh, climate change and uh, severe droughts and um, flooding that we're seeing all around the world now, there's a lot of places. But I think for me, one of the places that really always stood out was what I would term as a honeypot destination is Venice. Obviously, that's quite close to our shores. But just seeing how Venice copes with the international visitor numbers, as well as uh, the big cruise ships that were coming in, you know, thankfully, uh, a fair amount has changed over the last few years. But um, for me, that's quite an obvious place where, where you can see uh, the detrimental effect of of uh, climate change just on our doorsteps, but hey, I think uh, even people uh, in the United Kingdom have have seen the effects of of global warming and the, the sudden changes in our in our temperatures and been experiencing flooding. You know, even even in Worcester and London or anywhere which is close close to to our rivers and uh, marshland. So. Yeah, well, n- nobody's immune to it now, are they, Bruce? No one. No, absolutely, absolutely not. And as well as being a um, a businesswoman, a business leader uh, running Travel Matters, you're also a campaigner and you have a campaign, Make Travel Matter. Is that, did Travel Matters come out of Make Travel Matter or did that, or, or, did, or did the business come before the campaign? And what does, it, what does the campaign do? If you could explain that, that'd be great. Yes, I will. So um, I, after all um, the seasonal work and, and working for other travel companies um, around the world, I set up Travel Matters. Uh, you could say it was my first baby that uh, was set up in 1999. I've always been very conscious about how I travel and through word of mouth and building up the customer base, I've hoped that I've answered quite a few people's questions about how they can uh, travel more responsibly and ensure that they you know, tread lightly around the, the planet. So it was 10 years after having had the business that I was in uh, India. I was in a place called Varanasi, which is a very spiritual place. Uh, it's on the River Ganges. And I was celebrating 10 years of the business and reflecting on what I'd done, what I'd achieved. And I basically thought, what what does the next 10 years look like? And, well, it sounds a little bit woo-woo, but I swear I heard an audible voice say, make travel matter, (laughs) which I I, I thought about, you know, what would that look like? And 
decided to basically create like a mission statement, I suppose, an educational awareness program for, for how uh, not just my customers, but anyone that starts to look at the uh, website, predominantly uh, families, parents of children that uh, are taking, you know, taking their families uh, on their travels because, in essence, what we're doing is is putting people um, on different forms of transport and getting them to to visit different destinations, and we're trying to make them do that in the most sensitive way possible, really. But obviously, you can't avoid not getting on an aircraft from time to time, and we're we're not in the business of flight shaming. You know, we just want to make people realise that there are some certain choices and uh, different ways that you can behave as you go about. Uh, visiting these host communities around the world. Yeah, and I want to come on to those because it is a bit, as you said, there's a bit of sort of flight shaming and so people don't talk about it and they look nervously when you sort of, you know, ask if you're going on holiday or not. And um, some people have sort of come out and said, you know, travel's bad for the planet. I'm not going to fly anywhere, not going to do anything. There's others that say that if actually we didn't go and see things and experience landscapes and cultures, actually we wouldn't know the global impact of climate change. You know, and, the, and and arguably, I was thinking about this, and actually, arguably, probably the, the highest ever impact travel, which is putting people into space, led us to appreciate that, you know, our, our planet is just a blue marble sitting, you know, sitting in space in darkness. And actually, that was one of the sort of most profound environmental images there's been. You know, I don't think we need to keep going back up. Um, <laughs> as tourists have a look at it, it's got some pretty high-res images now from... Uh, NASA, but I think that that was sort of the ultimate travel experience in some ways from an environmental perspective. And you know, do you think we've got the balance right, or do you think we're sort of you know hopping around Europe on short haul flights too much, or travel and tourism? I guess my question is, tra- travel and tur- tourism is, is you know it's got a huge impact on the planet. Obviously, we can work towards reducing that, but should we just stop going on holiday? Where are you on that spectrum? Yeah, where am I on the spectrum? Well, I- I'd like to say that we can travel well without ruining the planet. Hundred um, percent. Remember that travel brings people together and uh, increases our understanding of different cultures. And um, you know, over the 1.4 billion international tourists, we, we need to to be making sure that we manage that correctly. Um, I think we need to be limiting the low or low cost, cheaper airlines, uh, uh, the airfares rather. I, I think actually in the UK at the moment we're in a bit of a shameful place with uh you know rail strikes and it being far more seductive to to jump on a on a plane even if you could actually access somewhere quite easily on a train instead or 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 a coach so yeah it, it's not an easy answer to come back to your space travel thing i think that should probably just be reserved for for the scientists i mean there's probably a lot of uh, space junk up, up in space, isn't there? Well, not junk. I mean, obviously, uh, technology is brilliant. What, if we didn't have the, all the satellites uh, that, are, that are there at the moment, uh, we wouldn't be able to communicate as we are now or perhaps even be able to put something like a podcast together. But uh, space tourism, I, d- I don't know really whether that's the right way forward when there's so much that we could be doing down here on on our beautiful planet Earth. Well, that's a, yeah. So, 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 space tourism isn't on your uh, list of um, experiences. That sounds no. like it, which is a good thing. But in terms of sort of you know responsible, responsible and and sort of experiential holidays, is it is it just for the well? I mean, not as wealthy as going to space, but is it? Is it just for the rich? And what about, you know, the people who just want to hop on a plane and go for a week in the sun when they've sort of been working in, you know, in in, in, in the UK all winter and it's miserable and wet? I mean, can we lower the impact for sort of package holidays as well as sort no, of... Uh, uh, again, I, I, I'd be shooting myself in the foot if I said you, you can't jump on an aircraft to have a holiday. You know, we're always going to need holidays. We're, we're, we're human beings. We, we get fatigued. Just a break away from our day-to-day whether we decide to go overseas or, or or just an hour away is is very important to get that rest and reset. Yeah, I think uh, you know we have to remember the benefits that being a visit you know that being a visitor to a host community. We have to think about the benefits that that, that can can bring. And actually, you know, the, the 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 tourism dollar, or as I said, that with the with the visitor economy, it can help to improve conservation and help with economic development 
it could be managed in a better way. I think there's a lot to be said for some of the travel sales companies or the marketeers, uh, how they have a place to be marketing far more responsibly. But, uh, you know, and thinking of supply chains, it's, I don't want to be wagging the finger, of course, because my business exists to, to be helping people, uh, you know, go on these holidays or adventures. And so 60% of tourism is to the beach, whether it's in the UK or internationally. So 60, so people are heading to the beach, which sort of we all know. But this is going to be impacted first as sea levels rise with global warming and beaches start to disappear. And equally, lots of people go skiing in winter, but they're already having shorter seasons due to less snow and warmer weather. So do you think, and are you evidencing the climate change affecting the holiday map? Um, Because if you look at the whole of the world, you know, people go on holiday at certain times of the year to certain destinations. Is that changing? And are you seeing people starting to go to different destinations because of climate change? Yeah, yeah, we are. Uh, And yeah, sadly, all those ski resorts and and the economy that, that that is produced through people wanting to ski, um, it's it's very problematic, isn't it? Because we can see that snow conditions over the last um, few years aren't as they used to be. Um, and, and we certainly can't rely on snow cannons and you know, because that's not particularly responsible either. So, yeah, we'll be pretty innovative, I'm sure, to find solutions for, for ensuring that the local economies survive, whether it means that people start to... <laughs> take up just more hiking to get to be in the mountains or, or mountain biking. That could be an option. What's really desperate is is for people that pay quite a fair whack to go during those peak season or in, you know, December, January in, in the school holidays and even the February half term or Easter holidays. And they they're not getting the snow that they were used to. And perhaps like the lift uh, operators it's not sustainable for them to even be there or keeping the the, the resort open the, there's a there's a negative impact throughout the whole supply chain isn't there first mile is the uk's leading waste management service we help over thirty thousand businesses reduce their carbon impact with our award-winning range of recycling solutions go to our website which is the first mile .co.uk to get started today. If you're enjoying this episode, don't forget to subscribe. We have brand new episodes every Wednesday. So if people are listening and you know thinking about where they're going to go on holiday next, is there a destination that's the greenest place to go uh, on holiday? What, what's the sort of greenest, lowest impact country if I'm going to consider how far I have to fly, when I'd get there, renewable energy, local food, you know, sustainable activities. What's the greenest destination? Yeah, uh, oh, very, very good question, that one. Uh, and too tricky to answer. But I would say when it comes to destination management and um, regional tourist boards or national tourist boards, I'd always say Costa Rica for me was was a country that I thought was trailblazing a path. Um, their uh, like strap line is something called Pura Vida. I don't know if you've ever been to Costa Rica, but uh, when I first visited, I saw the words Pura Vida everywhere. And it means you know pure life, and and they 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 make uh, great strides in um, eco tourism and green practices. So um, yeah, Costa Rica, uh, Switzerland's pretty hot in the sense that they've got a cracking infrastructure, uh, the railroads, amazing. But it, it's not that simple to answer because you know I, I've been incredibly privileged to to go to many many countries and. You know, a lot of the African countries or or India, you know, some of those rural communities, <laughs> they're living out sustainable life in their daily life, you know, and struggling struggling with the challenges of of even finding you know clean water. <laughs> Do you think there's any awareness or realization from the? I mean, there will be for individuals, but from the general holiday goer that. Actually, the reason that the ski seasons are getting shorter, the reason that beaches are sort of uh, becoming less attractive, the reason that it's getting too hot to sit on the beach, that's because of our activities which lead, which lead to greenhouse gas emissions. And, and one of those is travel. Do you think there's, there's any awareness? Do you think we should be sort of focusing in on travel because it 
can be sort of more to the acute spectrum, whereas if you live in Britain and it's a bit warmer in the summer, it doesn't really resonate so much. And do you think we can use travel as a sort of lever to get more awareness and get people talking about climate change? Because, you know, we are in a in an emergency, in a crisis, and it sort of feels that like often that we're not moving quick enough to solutions. Mm, no, 100%. I, I think this is the reason that, that I wanted to... Um get busy with the Make Travel Matter campaign, I suppose, which is like 15 years old, you know, trying to educate consumers uh, how responsible tourism um, can be done in order to achieve sustainable tourism. Um, we all have uh, responsibility. We're all uh, stewards of the planet. So it is it is about behaviour change. And if you were to consider the holistic cost of travelling, the financial, environmental, social costs, I, I don't want just jumping on a plane and having a fly and flop holiday to be like the sort of junk food of, of travel because uh, travel needs to be savoured, be slower, be transformative, be long lasting. Uh, and we can all take uh, um, a place uh, in that, uh, our own yeah, personal personal responsibility. So, yeah. And do you think that can be achieved on my It sounds good, but I think there's probably – tens of thousands of people are like the phrase fly and flop that just want to fly and flop and go somewhere and aren't interested in the culture or sort of the geography or the context of where they are and do you think that's going to change can we make that sort of travel as sustainable yeah well again i think through through um, our make travel matter campaign that these are all questions that that you know travelers can be asking themselves around sustainability uh, and what it means when they're on holiday are they are they looking at uh, using renewable energy uh, in the accommodation that that they're they're staying in um where's the food come from has it been locally sourced what are the employers uh, are they happy are they from the local communities who owns the hotel? C can I think about the mode of transport that I've taken to get to this particular destination? Is it is it is it cleaner, greener? If I'm going to fly, could I go in economy because there'll be more bums on seats? You know, it's it's just thinking about every everything. Um, and there is an awakening. There is a there is a, I think uh, that certainly since the pandemic, there is a shift where people seem to be far more uh, conscious about how we do life, really. And is that sustain so you know is that sustainable travel? Is it about you know if you have to fly somewhere or you want to fly somewhere, then fair enough. But from booking a holiday, if I go to say Jet to or Hayes or someone to book my holiday to go to Greece for a week, are there things that I can be ticking off when I'm looking through a holiday website to check that my holiday is more sustainable? Should I be offsetting the carbon impact? I mean, is, is there like a checklist on travel matters of the things that I should look to to make travel more sustainable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've we've got a we've got a downloadable PDF, a, a guide to making travel matter, and what does that look like? Trying to to help consumers understand what ethical tourism is, the, the economic prosperity for for the countries that they're going to, encouraging them to, uh, to think about uh, social equality. Just trying to answer some of those questions, really. I mean, we don't have a carbon calculator per se, because there's quite a few different carbon calculators out there. And to be fair, a lot of the airlines do have carbon calculators, so you can look at ways of reducing uh, your carbon footprint uh, by by looking at uh, perhaps travelling on newer aircraft and making. Uh, different purchasing choices from the get-go. You can think about carrying uh, less less baggage and buying more at the place that you're visiting. The likes of Skyscanner and Booking.com and Google these days have got um, information, that, that, you know, this carbon calculator where you, you can see before you book your flight how many carbon emissions you're likely to be burning but it's a bit of a minefield and and for me it's it's coming away from just the simplicity of trying to be a bit more responsible and, and is there any ratings for it so if i look at if i go on holiday with you or with the i think the two biggest i can't remember who's the biggest now hayes travel who bought thomas cook and jet too they're the biggest sort of travel agents in the uk now if I go to their holiday and sort of browse their website and browse holidays, is there any green rating? Like there's EPC rating for fridges or the housing rating to say how energy efficient your appliance or your house is. Is that available for booking a holiday? There are so many like kite marks or certification programs uh, within travel and tourism that it could probably make it rather confusing for uh, the end user. We ended up 
going down the route of um, looking at the B Corp method. That's no mean feat. You know, it took us, I don't know, 14, 18 months of, of doing that. And in essence, what that is, is an external audit to see how you operate environmentally and socially in the business. And uh, that's, you know, it's an external audit. So, you know, we, we, we can't pay for that other than basically displaying how, how you work as a business. And then you get uh, a point system and, and you get granted that. Or, or if you haven't quite got the points, they'll come back to you and explain how you can refine and polish it and sharpen it in order to, to become uh, B Corp certified. So, um, so um, I'd certainly say look out for that as a kite mark if, if you're in the business of um, shopping around for booking a holiday or booking, booking travel. On this show, we're building a hall of fame for climate heroes. And we always ask our wonderful guests to leave something in First Mile's Climate Heroes Hall of Fame. So what or who would it be? Okay, well, I would like to put Dr. Jane Goodall in the Hall of Fame. She is um, an anthropologist and uh, an activist. She is well known for her conservation and animal welfare. Um, And in 2002, she was awarded the United Nations Messenger of Peace. And for me as a leader, yeah, she's a bit of a guru. That's amazing. Thanks, Karen. A great addition to our Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. So, Karen, really fascinating and, 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 you know, super interesting to hear about travel and the Travel Maths approach to it. Um, what's, what's coming up that you're excited about? What's going to be happening next in your world? Oh, next to my world. So actually something that uh, I started doing during the pandemic uh, was going back to what I used to do before I had Travel Matters, which was organizing retreats. And uh, I I hosted uh, these retreats in Scotland uh, for the last two years, and they've they've worked really well. And I'm hosting another two in September and October. And in essence, they are around my personal passion, which is nature immersion and being more mindful about uh, self-development and um, eating well and resting. So that that's what's coming up as, as well. But thank you for asking. <laughs> Perfect. Sounds very exciting. Sounds good. Um, and for listeners, how do they find you? A, a website for Travel Matters? Ah, oh, thank you. Um, it's www.travelmatters.co.uk. Perfect. And I presume there'll be a link through to the campaign from Travel Matters website as well. There is. There's lots of resources on the website about Make Travel Matter and what you can do and our our charity partners um, and uh, tree planting partners and uh, information about the B Corp. And uh, yeah. Absolutely perfect. So much much to do and so much to get on. So we basically don't stop going on holiday um, and... uh, don't feel bad about flying, but have a look at Travel Matters website to lower the impact of your holiday and have a great summer. Karen, it's been amazing having you on the show. Thank you very much for coming on First Miles Climate Heroes. Thank you very much. I'm Bruce Bratley, and you've been listening to First Miles Climate Heroes, where we meet incredible people making an impact to tackle climate change. First Mile is the leading recycling company serving businesses with daily collections through to specialist recycling. To find out more, click in this show's bio or search First Mile Recycling. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, leave a review and tell all your colleagues and friends.